Ben's so good at doing those things. Ooh, Let's try not fall. to fall off here. Hi, welcome to the Maker. Oh, do you want to do it? No, I'll do it. So, so you do so, it. I'll do it. Welcome to the Maker YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Chris, for those of you that do not know me, um, and this is Ben. We are usually behind the cameras. You could probably tell that I'm not used to sitting in front of a camera talking to you, but we thought with Maker being closed over the Christmas, uh, the guys are gonna be doing some work tidying up the unit. We thought we'd make a video about what Ben and I do. You often hear us refer to from Dave as, as the guys behind the camera. Well, this, this is us. Um, and we're just gonna have a little bit of a chat really about what it's like filming here at Maker and turning out, or the challenges really, of turning out a weekly video specifically for the YouTube channel. Go on, Mark. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, That's right, no, no, we could do a cut on that, I didn't see it. No, no, it's cool, yeah. it's cool. Rewind a little bit. So when we first set up the Maker YouTube channel, it actually came out of shooting some Instagram content for Dave. Dave hired me, my company, um, to shoot some short videos for, for, the, for the Instagram, which went down fairly well. But Dave very quickly put the question, how do we grow this? How do we, how do we make money out of, or how do we attract customers really to Maker? We realized that Instagram was very short-lived and we needed to make a more long-form, in-depth video and the YouTube platform was chosen, wasn't it? So we proposed this to Dave and we said, look, to, to make this worthwhile, we're gonna have to commit to it for at least three months. We, we might not get the view straight away, but we'll analyze it after three months of, of putting out weekly content. Um, that had some challenges around it, which we'll discuss, but Ben, why don't you tell people watching what, what, what is the process that we go through to make one weekly vlog? Yeah, so every week is different. You never quite know what's going to happen, really. You can try and plan. We, I'm chatting to Dave. Chris is chatting to Dave throughout the week, usually, as well, trying to figure out what we're going to do for the following shoot day. Sometimes it goes to plan. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan. Dave is a very busy guy. He's constantly on the phone to customers. Customers are coming here to the garage to actually see their builds, Dave's doing up quotes and showing them current builds, what they might be interested in. If a customer comes along, we lost him, basically. It's his business, that's how he makes money. We can't interfere with that. Um, luckily, a lot of the other boys are very good with talking to us, showing us what they're doing as well. So we shoot the videos on a Thursday. That's a routine that we've stuck to now for six months. We always shoot on a Thursday and we try and deliver on a Friday. One of the key reasons Dave likes to have the videos made is so that he can tell his customers who've got the vehicles, the, the the vehicles behind us, he can really be showing them, you know, what, what is it that's been happening to their vehicle this week? You know, something that's invaluable to them, something that's useful for us because that's kind of like free content. But we also have to play the YouTube game. We also have to recognize that if we want our videos shown on YouTube and we'll always be judged by, you know, the metrics, Dave's always going to judge us on, are we growing the channel? Are we getting more people watching? Is he getting more phone calls for, you know, buying parts or, or builds? We're going to get judged on that. We have to play that YouTube game, don't we? So that's been particularly challenging, I would say, the last month or so, because in November, for a reason that we're still trying to understand is the channel really blew up. To give you some of the metrics, we're, we're used to getting 50 to 60,000 views a month. During November, that exploded to 200,000. We did experiment with doing some YouTube shorts. We had some very short-lived kind of um, results off that, I would say, you know, it was, it was good whilst it lasted, some big views, but we also got some negative feedback from, from you, our subscribers basically saying that that's all that YouTube was serving up to you. And as a result, we also saw a fall off in our long form videos. And really it's the long form videos that Dave brings us into to shoot. They're the ones that tell the story of everything that's going on here. Um, and that's probably a, a pertinent point, Ben. You know, what, what is it that, it was quite a challenge really, isn't it? Yeah, we, we come here, we're, we're on site for eight to 10 hours or you're on site for eight to 10 hours. There's a lot that you can shoot, but as I said, we, we've got to make that into an ent entertaining video. What are some of the stuff that you've learned in, in, you know, I'm looking at some of the equipment that we use here. What, what are some of the stuff that you've learned that, that kind of helps you get that video made as quickly as possible? Yeah, so especially in this kind of scenario when we're shooting on a Thursday to get the video out Friday lunchtime, that's the goal every week. So one thing for me, I think especially, is that at times quality of image, something that we yeah. very much appreciate, that's not strictly important, especially for you guys watching. You wouldn't necessarily know whether we're shooting on a big Sony camera or 
the mobile phone. Whatever gets us the interesting shot at the time, whatever we have on us, that's what matters more really. More than anything as well, it's story. So I can be, I could quite happily turn up here eight in the morning and just shoot right away through till half five, six o'clock at night. But at some point I need to actually make the video. So you have to be quite selective really, I think in what you're shooting as well. So we'll get here quite early. Hopefully the day before we'll all already have a plan of what the main feature of the video yeah, is going to be. Yeah, it's probably worth mentioning at that point, isn't it? That you know, we've got a WhatsApp group with Dave. Um, we're feeding him some of the, the stuff that we're seeing in YouTube, aren't we? Mm. You know, like, Dave, we're, we're telling you that like this thing's trending or Land Rover are putting out a new vehicle this week. Have we got anything that matches it that we can kind of do a comparison? So yeah. we're, we're giving Dave ideas, aren't we, the day before that we come here. Dave always likes to do around the workshop, but we also try and have that key feature, don't we, of yeah. one key thing that makes the thumbnail and, and helps us kind of make that the kind of like title that's going to appeal to more people, mm. isn't it, I would say. Yeah, that's it. So obviously, like Chris said before, customers, people who actually have vehicles here in the workshop, they want to see what work has been done to the vehicle. So that's sort of what Dave's little workshop walk around this for really to update his customers and obviously most of you guys i'm sure are probably interested in what's been done to them as well but our main feature you know we need to try and as much as anything for the youtube algorithm we try and focus on one main subject whether it's an exhaust system for a certain type of engine in a land rover or installing a certain engine onto a chassis for a new build. That's what we'll try and hone in on. Whatever else happens later on in the day, great, we'll stick it in. But we need to try and find a main feature. Looking at some of the equipment that we, that we do use, obviously Ben's alluded to, you know, we can get stuff off our phones, but we are about the quality. We do want to deliver a good looking product to you. So we use a Sony, uh, Ben will probably correct me, the A7 IV camera. Um, we don't shoot everything in 4K because we're doing such a quick turnaround. I say we, ben, ben does most of this, such a quick turnaround. So we tend to shoot in 1080, 50 frames a second so that we can slow down and give you those little, like the, we, we call it our B-roll, our cutaways. Um, and we, we can do that. We use a 2470 lens mounted on the camera because that gives us two lenses in one really we can do the, the the wide shots when dave's talking to the camera but then when he points at something we can zoom in and we've we've quickly got that um audio has always been a bit of a challenge for us and you know we know that really on youtube audio is really important we've got to make something that's really you know easy to listen to um all of we, we actually shoot on a couple of cameras but this is the, the, the one that i'm showing you so we use the rode video mic pro to get that ambient sound and then ben's very cleverly rigged us up with these DJI wireless microphones that we mount on Dave or we carry around with us and, and mount on the member of staff that we're filming so we can always give you some really crisp audio from this one when this one sometimes is is a little bit noisy because of the, the, the stuff going on in the background. We shoot also on, you know, we've got GoPros dotted around that we shoot the time lapses on and um, we've got a little Sony, this is the ZV-1 vlog camera, this is the one that we mount now in the car windscreen to do the point of view, shooting back at Dave or whoever's doing the piece to camera in the... Um, in the vehicles itself and then you've had some success haven't you with one of the 360 cameras if you yeah, want to tell this is the is 360 one x it's actually quite an old camera now um by i mean technology moves so quickly this is about three or four years old i don't I think something like yeah. that but it's really quite easy to use literally hook it up to your phone you can i mean you don't need to frame it at all because it's got two lenses on it it's capturing everything going on around it set up a time lapse or a video whatever you want and then reframe it afterwards so we can do either just a really wide shot or honed in we can move it around throughout the shot the camera is not moving at all so yeah it's fun to play with i wouldn't strictly use it all the time i think three or four videos now 
we've used it. Yeah, I think it brings an interesting view and yeah. it's also that we can leave underneath the vehicle for when we're not filming. In total, we spend about 20 hours putting one of the 20 minute vlogs together. We, we kind of set that as a, as a target. We always want to make a 20 minute vlog. We wanted it to be something that people could enjoy, you know, maybe on their lunch break or on their coffee break or something. We, if you go too short, it's almost not worth doing. You know, we, we do monetize. That's something that we, we, we want to kind of build upon. We want to grow the audience, hopefully so the channel can pay for itself eventually. Um, but also we want to give people a, some kind of content that they can watch maybe whilst having a coffee or over the lunch break so we've, we've always designed it to be a 20 minute video we've experimented with doing some other breakout videos but at the moment we're not getting such good views on that and we do think it's damaging the channel so going into 2023 what are we looking at doing we're, we're going to keep doing the weekly vlog that's something that's useful for dave as a, as a business product um, as well as something that we can you know offer and, and you let people kind of like see behind the roller shutter doors here um, but we also do want to bring in some individual build videos so we're going to be looking at putting some videos out where you see the start to finish now that that can be anything to from two to six months depending on how complicated some of these builds are um, but we're going to be looking at bringing those in, in in the in the new year with some of the existing builds and with some of the really interesting builds going forward we want to build a community around maker and that's where you the subscriber comes in um, it's probably a good point to say that if you're not already subscribing and this is the first video you watch we, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel um, we're looking at growing we'd love it if you shared the channel whether that's on Facebook or Reddit or, or, or wherever you can share it you know because we want to take you along for our ride we we want to start responding to more things that you guys are looking for so you know on any of our videos, particularly this one or any of the videos you've watched, please drop us a comment. We do read all of them. Um, we do highlight them to Dave as well so he can pick up on them. And, and when we see an opportunity to make a video around something that somebody needs, we will we'll be looking at doing that. So please continue to, to, to comment on the videos and, and, and feedback um, in the community pages um, where you can so that we can, we can grow this. What's been your favorite thing that you've filmed this year, Ben? You know what, I'm tempted to say my favourite thing so far has been the Dirty 130 going to get a Christmas tree. But that wasn't me. I edited it. Um, I'm trying to think now. I'll help out. I'll help out, right. For those of you that are regular subscribers to the channel and watch all of our videos, and you know there are a number of you that I see comment every week, and you know, we really appreciate that. I know that you've seen a lot of Project Wombat. It's, it's, a, it's a 110 in a beautiful bluey kind of turquoise color, lovely black roll cage around the back. And it's in and out a little bit. It's, it's obviously been quite a tricky build for the guys here with, with a lot of challenges because it's so powerful and it's got some really exciting features. But we had this lovely day uh, back in the summer that, that Dave and one of the members of staff came out with us and we, we took it to the local runway and we, we flew a drone over it and stuff and just got some really epic shots. And for me, you know, both of us get a really unique insight into the challenges that happen behind the scenes. Some of it that we, we don't show you because it is frustrating trying to fit some of these really complicated engines in these vehicles. But it's nice to see when something comes together and you know, we can get some really lovely photos and video for it and kind of give back really. You know, and it shows all the hard work that's gone into building these things. Yeah, I have to say the same. It's like my favourite parts of these videos really are seeing the cars in action, seeing them driving. And we know that that's what you guys want to see as well. Unfortunately, it can't always happen because they're not Dave's cars, they're customers' cars. He very much needs permission off the owners. Um, obviously, if the guys are doing some road testing, yeah. they, they need to put the miles in when they're tuning the engines, that sort of thing. Yes, we can jump in. You know, They need to do those miles anyway. Um, but if they're just going out ragging it, you know, that's not going to just happen with any vehicle that we can point out in here. It's a shame, you're right, because we would like to kind of do a whole Pimp My Ride channel where, you know, we just got some vehicles in and made them really cool and exciting and then just took them down to the runway. But unfortunately at the moment, that can't happen with every build, so... Yeah, but if we can get some of the owners on board, maybe if you are an owner, if you are somebody bringing your car to Maker to have that featured, let us know. Um, you know, mention it that you know you'd like to see some driving footage, and if that's acceptable, then we can definitely take it out and we'll we'll get you some nice shots. I think as well for me, Ben, some of the things that I like, you know, Dave's very lucky that some of the staff here are very passionate about what they do. Um, we've started to see Tom featuring some videos, and you know, it, we, if you need subtitles for anything that Tom says, you know, just just let us know down in the comments. Um, but it's nice to see how passionate 
passionate he is about things. Um, it's nice to see some of the other departments growing. We've got upstairs, just, just next to us where we are now, the- Maker trim. Maker trim, that's it, sorry. Yeah, Maker trim. And yeah, it's pretty amazing to see that, you know, like 12 months ago, this didn't even exist. And like, I'm just looking through beyond the camera at the moment at the amount of colors of leather that we've got going on. And, you know, seeing Mark and the talent that he's able to bring here, which isn't the welding, it isn't the nuts and bolts and stuff. It's something a little bit different. And I hope that going into 2023, we can, we can see some more of that. And I know that there's a, there's a, a very bright orange set of trim in the process at the moment. I'm looking yeah, forward to seeing that. Very going, bright too. orange and a very purple vehicle that it's going in. So that'll be quite a contrast to try and capture <laughs> for us. Um, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one, I think. I think we've got most of the trim finished anyway for that one. Yeah. We've got the seats and door cards, everything. It's just the, the vehicle doesn't actually exist yet. <laughs> um that's how far in advance some of this work is as well yeah. being carried out um yeah what would you say is your favorite vehicle that you've seen going out the doors here um i remember when dave showed me the it was just a it was a sketch an artist impression of ethos mm. and you know it, the, even just the name itself isn't it you know it, that's what the ethos of maker is it's 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 taken these really old vehicles. Sometimes they're tired. You know, I mean, you look at look at Scram. You just look at how rotten and 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 how that's been transformed. And so, it's difficult for me. I mean, Ethos. I just think it looks beautiful. It sounds amazing. Um, the colours. It. I always enjoyed Legacy. Uh, that was a one ten, a, a, a flat green one ten. I, th I thought that looked beautiful. Some of the bonkers ones. Cerberus. We've got Cerberus in at, behind us at the moment because the owners. How do we say it? We just got it too hot, right? Yeah, it so melted something. It things. melted something in it and stuff. So I, for me, I mean, I've, I've done a terrible job of answering your question. I don't, I don't think I can say one because mm. they've all got different styles and stuff. But They're all their own characters in a way. Okay, how about we reframe well. it? Uh, I, I've got my design in my head. Okay, Ben, um, you, we, we get to see behind the scenes here of all the different things that happen. We've got so many different engines and stuff. If, if this was top trumps, what what build are you having? Are you having a 90, a 110 or 130? Do you know what? I'd have to go, I think 90, okay. maybe 110. No, you've got one, to pick- 130 you, is you, too big for you've me. You've got to pick um, one. So let, let's expect let, this let's vehicle. Let's go 90. Up. So you're going with the 90. Yeah. What, what color are you having it? Pure white. Pure white, like, yeah, that's a nice one. Um, how are we going with the engine? Are we going with the BMWs that get fitted here, which tend to be the more daily drivers, or are we going with the big Corvette, Chevy, LS3, LSA? Yeah, so I think I would probably go either BM, M57, 330D, or maybe 300 TDI, one of Dave's rebuilds. It's Dave's dad that puts together the, the rebuilds from the old 200 TDI engines and some mm. of the stuff that Pete does is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it'd be really interesting to, to show some of those. So we've got mm. a white 90 with what engine, you went with the BMW engine. That's Maybe BMW. you could go with something like Miami that had the twin turbo, because I've driven that and that is awesome. Yeah, awesome it's to drive. certainly sounded nice. Um, link up here if you haven't seen the video on Miami by the yeah, way. Yeah Ben's so good at doing those things. Oop, Let's try not fall. to fall off here. One of the earlier films that, that we shot very early on like episode six or seven or something was one called Nardo and I always thought that was nice. It was a, I think it's a that's an Audi colour I think Nardo grey or something. I always thought that was nice with the black panoramic glass. Right. I would definitely have Oh, no, it's, it's a difficult choice. Ethos, I think, has got one of the Corvette Chevrolet engines in it and is amazing. But I've driven Miami and it's got that automatic BMW twin turbo and it just drove beautifully. So I think, yeah. I think that's for me, yeah. So a, a, either a black or a dark grey. Definitely have that lovely panoramic glass at the back. I think that's really, really cool. Um, nin Ninja looks pretty funky, I think, in, 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 in its black trim that's down yeah, here yeah. at the moment. Yeah, um, I think I've basically just described the new build that's going on at the moment, which is a white Ninja. So, so that's a white Defender 90 with M57 engine. Uh, I love the look of the new Scram build, which is down below us here at the moment, which is pure white, all the black trim. I think yeah, it just looks pretty smart. mega. Ben, I am going to have to stop this, and I'll tell you why. Well, you'll know why, because it is approaching 1.30, 
Um, we've had to film this during the guys' lunch break because without a doubt, the biggest challenge to filming anything here is the background noise. The only way we can possibly get an interview done is to wait till all the guys leave for their lunch and they'll be coming back in in a couple of minutes. So if you've got this far through the video, um, generally thank you. If this is something that you wanna see more of, uh, me and Ben, or maybe you know we just sit down with Dave a little bit more, drop a comment below. Um, if, you, if you're fairly new to the channel and maybe the SEO has served this one up, um, this isn't what the videos are normally like, um, you wanna check back and have a look at some of our weekly episodes. We are shooting this um, just before Christmas, so it's probably relevant for Ben and I to both wish you a very Merry Christmas and all the very best for the new year. We look forward to bringing you uh, more videos um, and pff, who knows what Maker's gonna serve up for us in 2023. Thanks for watching.